welcome back once again. Now we've got the fifth six weeks recap. You're probably thinking, Mr. Bird, we're not even done with the fifth six weeks yet. But, or maybe you're watching this way later in the future, just hoping to kind of get a glimpse as to what we covered in my classes. Well, I'm doing this a bit early because, um, as you all know, that dreaded star test is coming up. And I want to give you every possible resource to study. So take a look at this video. We're going to talk about different kinds of tables and plots and things that you should know, such as measures of center, mean, median, mode, measures of spread, quartiles, interquartile range, or IQR, range, outlier, dot plot, stem and leaf plot. Sounds very scary for some of you, right? I'm sure you're kind of freaking out right now, scratching your head, going, what in the world is interquartile range? When you find out how simple it is, you'll kind of give it a bit of a laugh and think, wow, who would have thought? It looks so scary and it's not even that big of a deal. Even the upcoming vocabulary, when you see it, you'll realize it's not as scary as it looks, just like most of math. It's all about giving it a chance. Speaking of vocabulary, we also had histogram, box plot, categorical data, relative frequency, and a percent bar graph. And you'll notice when you watch, if you watch this hand in hand with the second part of the fifth six weeks recap, you'll see that a lot of this information relates to the financial side of, of mathematics. So make sure you give this a very thorough understanding before you move on to the financial side. So let's begin. Let's talk about the first lesson in the fifth six weeks, which is mean, median, and mode. These are all known as measures of center. And the reason is you pretty much summarize a set of data using the median or the mode. Or the mean, of course, like we use the mean to describe your grades on your report card, right? The average. And the reason they're called measures of center is because they describe the center of a set of data. In other words, if I needed to describe like 20 grades, 20 assignments, 20 quizzes or whatever, with one number, what would I use? You would use the center. And that is what they're about. And we're going to go a bit more in depth into them as, as we go along. So just make sure, like I said, at any point, pause if you need to, rewind if you need to, fast forward if you think you've mastered something. But the most important thing is make sure you're understanding. That's the priority. Do I get it? Great. Let me keep moving on. So the mean, it's when you find the sum of all the data that's provided and then divide by the number of pieces of data. So if there are eight, let's say eight scores in a, in a season of basketball, you would add them up and divide by eight. That's your average. The median, what you would do is list your data, least to greatest, greatest to least if you'd like, and find the data that's right in the center. If you have two though, add them up, divide by two. And that's your mean, your median, sorry. For the mode, once again, put your data least to greatest, greatest to least, whatever works for you. And the number that appears the most, most often, that's your mode. So if your data was like one, two, three, 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 what is your mode? Three, because it comes out the most. So again, at any point, feel free to take screen captures of these uh, lessons and whatnot. Uh, here's some examples for you to look at. We had daily high temperatures and we added up the data and it gave you 483. And you can check for yourselves. And how much data was there? How many different temperatures were there? There were seven. So we divided that 483 by seven and it gave me the mean, 69 degrees. Much like we find your averages, like I said. If you put the data in order, least to greatest, you'll notice that there is one number in the middle and that is 71. That's your median. Referring back to your numbers in order, you'll notice that only one number repeats several times, twice to be exact, 71. That's also my mode. Can you have several modes? Of course. Can you have several medians? No. 
Make sure you remember that. As far as measures of spread, like I said, this part you might want to pause, take a good look at this information because it can look very daunting, very scary. But what you have to understand, if I were to get a list of data, least to greatest, and cut it into four sections, those sections are called quartiles. Now, that point where you divided it in the beginning, that's your first quartile. Your other quartile would be in the, in the other side, the other center, if you will. And you'll, be see, you'll see what I mean in a few moments. The median is technically like your second quartile. We just don't call it that. If you were to subtract the first and third quartiles, it's called the interquartile range. And then range, we know, is highest minus lowest. And then outliers, it's pretty much 1.5 times the value of the IQR. So let's take a look at this. If I were to put my numbers in order, least to greatest, and find my median, can you see that arrow pointing to where the median should be? It cuts your data right in half. Now, if you look at the left side of your data, find the median of that side, of that lower half. And that is your quartile, 1.5. Find the median of the other side of the data, the, the uh, larger numbers, and you'll see that the median is 6.5. But instead of calling it median, 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 three different medians, we're calling them quartile one, median, quartile three. Like I said, feel free to pause, take a look at this, go back to your notes. It's not as bad as it seems. Trust me, guys. I'm just trying to keep it brief so y'all can get a quick recap of things. Going on to dot plots. If you were to look at um, that list of data, it looks kind of overwhelming, right? And if you want to organize it, especially when it's repeating like that, several ones, several zeros, several twos, and so on, you could draw a number line pretty much based on what numbers you see. I see zeros, ones, twos, threes, and fours. So what you're going to do is draw a dot, hence the name dot plot. Draw a dot for the amount of times you see that number. Like I see four zeros, put four dots on zero. And then count how many ones you see, put that number of dots. And twos and threes. Fours, you see two dots, or I'm sorry, two fours, so you put two dots over the four. That's a dot plot. Pretty simple, pretty easy to read, right? Histograms. The difference between a histogram and a bar graph is that in a bar graph, the bars are not touching. But in a histogram, they are, because they're all pertaining to the exact same data. They represent data that's been organized into intervals, into groups. And what you're doing is you're pretty much telling me like, okay, from this interval to this interval, how many times did it happen? That's your first bar. This interval to this interval, how many times did this occur? What was the frequency? That's your second bar. And you keep doing that. And that's pretty much helping you find out how frequent something is happening. Instead of looking at just list after list of data, it's all there so you could see where the most activity is taking place. Just like the other slides, this, this particular part of the six weeks can take some time. So feel free to pause, take screen captures, take, you know, write stuff down, whatever helps you guys. That's why these resources are here for you and for the World Wide Web, for everybody on YouTube. Moving on to box plots. If you understood the quartiles, Pretty much what you would have to do to create a box plot is simple. Put your, data, put your data in order, least to greatest, and on a number line, graph your lowest data. What was your smallest number? What was your greatest number? The only thing is we're giving them fancy titles like lower extreme, upper extreme. Smallest, biggest, that's what it means. And then find your median of that data, put it on the number line, Find the median of the lower half, that's your quartile one. Find the median of your upper half, quartile three. And pretty much draw a box where your quartiles are at. 
and give it those little whiskers that go out to the extremes. And of course, Median wants the line too, because it, you know, it needs some attention. And you got yourself a box plot. It looks scary at first, but simple to create. And again, sorry for the speed, guys, but I just want to make sure you get to cover everything imaginable so that you can get a brief idea of what's, what was covered in sixth grade. Data dis distribution, speaking of which, is when you look at how data is distributed. For example, cut a line, an imaginary line, right down the middle of your data, whether it's a graph, bar graph, dot plot, anything, box plot even, and ask yourself, is it symmetric? Is there the same amount of data on the left as there is on the right? If there is, it's symmetric. If there isn't, it's not. Look for clusters of data. Wherever you have groups of data that just are all kind of grouped together, that's a cluster. Look for gaps. Is there a space between something that happened on your data? Are there peaks? Where did the event occur the most? That's a peak in your data. So you're just analyzing what's happening. This can help you in the real world to kind of make business decisions and, and whatnot. Coming soon in the final, the finale, the final video, checking accounts, credit and debit cards, credit reports, paying for college, and annual salaries. It's been fun making these videos for you guys, and hopefully they've come in handy. Hopefully uh, you can go back and say, you know what? This really helped me review for the star. This really helped me review for finals. It just helped me review sixth grade in, in particular. You know, I just, it helped is what I want to know. So good luck, guys, and keep on studying.